can't get that thing to stop. Welcome, I'm Dale Robinson and this is my channel, Observer of Anomalous Objects, and I want to welcome you to this channel in case you haven't seen it before or you haven't subscribed. Uh, let me invite you to go ahead and subscribe to it. I think this is my 14th video that I'm making now, so there's plenty of content in case you haven't seen some of it, but I'd love for you to subscribe and be a part of this channel. Um, it's newer, but it's growing. I want to start off before we um, get going on Larry McGuire and, and just talk about truth for a minute because at the end of the day this really isn't about Larry Maguire this really isn't about the Five Eyes Alliance what this is about is truth truth that has been hidden from us for decades and so let me put a couple of, of quotes up there for you this is from Joseph Estrada and it is the truth will come out in the end and it absolutely will Here's another one from the Bible. I believe this is a universal truth, whether you believe the Bible or whether you're Christian or whatever, it doesn't matter. I think this applies to all religions, to all cultures, when it says there is nothing kept secret that will not come to light. And so that's very, very true that what you're going to hear today, what you're going to be reminded about, this is nothing new. This is something that we believe for a long time. But the evidence is mounting and mounting and mounting to the fact that it's not speculation anymore. It's pretty much consensus now, um, as you're going to see from Larry McGuire's letter um, to Anon, the, the Ministry of Defense Minister. Um, this is a fact. It's coming from so many different sources, not just from David Grush, not just from Lou Elizondo. Um, or Chris Mellon, it's coming in waves. And I really expect that we're going to get even more and more of that. But let's go ahead and uh, start with Larry McGuire for a minute. I'm sure that, like me, you probably never heard of him until just recently. And uh, he's a member of Parliament, of the Canadian Parliament. Um, first time I saw it where it said MP by it, I'm going, the only thing I know that stands for MP is military police, and I can tell you right now that he is not a member of the military police. He is a member of parliament for the Canadian government and stuff. And so the reason I'm doing this, this podcast about Larry McGuire is that recently he put out um, an article or a letter, whatever you want to call it, and he wrote it. Um, to the Minister of Defense in Canada, and literally uh, Minister Anand. And in case you're trying to figure out, well, well, how would that relate to those of us who live in the United States? What would be the equivalent? Well, it would be equivalent to our Secretary of Defense. That would be the same job in America, but this is in Canada. Um, the one thing I want to say about Larry is uh, I'm a fan already because I'm learning, the more I learn about him, is he's a voice for disclosure in Canada. And I know a lot of the other countries, I've heard people complain about what's going on in Canada and what's going on in the UK. But at least here, Canada has um, a Tim Burchett, or whatever you want to call it, a Senator uh, Gillibrand. He's got somebody who's, they have somebody who's trying to sound the alarm bells, and we'll get into exactly what that means in a, in a minute, but this isn't the first letter or op-ed that he has written. In fact, if you go back to May 12th of 2020, he wrote an op-ed where he said this. He said, UAPs are real and Canada should take them seriously. UAPs are real and Canada should take them seriously. And so, um, you know, here we are three years later and now he's putting out this other letter which is pretty profound. In the latest letter to uh, Minister Anand, Larry McGuire, like I said, who's a member of, of the Canadian Parliament, titled this, this letter, and I, I think it's pretty profound what he titled it with, because he titled it with these exact words, Defense Research and Development, and then it says this, Canada in Possession of Recovered UAP Material. 
And so we're not just hearing this in the United States. We're not just hearing it from Bob Lazar. We're not just hearing it from David Grush. We're not just hearing it from other whistleblowers in America. Now we're hearing it from a Canadian, and not just a Canadian, but a member of the Canadian Parliament. Let me go ahead and read a, a section of what he wrote just to get you, give you a feel of, of what this letter is all about. And so he, this is where he's um, talking to Minister Anand. He says, It has come to my attention through meetings with American officials that the United States Senate Select Committee on Intelligence and the Senate Committee on Armed Services has been undertaking, now catch this, in-camera hearings with government and military subject matters experts on the recovery, catch this, on the recovery and the exploitation of physical material from unidentified aerial phenomena. Now I would change that word anomalous phenomena is what we're using today, but um, that was the catch word back in 2017, 2018, and so uh, I guess he hasn't quite caught up with the times as far as what we call it now. I mean, it's still a UFO or whatever you want to label it. I mean, it's still that, but the terminology is, is changing, and obviously he didn't get the memo that it's anomalous, which is, by the way, why I have observer of anomalous objects on my title for mine as well. Um, so that's pretty important. Now he goes on to say that that Canada needs to get out in front of this. That that they need to get on it out in front of it because it's going to damage their credibility not only with their allies but with the public in Canada. That if they don't get out in front of it before this story breaks wide open, which I'm telling you things are starting to break open. And so politicians and, and people that don't want to look bad, they don't want their country to look bad, um, they're starting to speak up. Because this is like a dam that is getting ready to breach its walls. I mean, it is things are about to change quite a bit. And then after saying that, he goes on in the second section I want to read for you, where he says, as Minister of National Defense, he's talking to Anand again, you may not be aware of Defense Research and Development Canada, the DRDC, has participated, now catch this, in efforts to analyze UAP, which is publicly traceable to circa 1950. This recovered foreign material, what do you call it? Foreign material is studied through the Five Eyes Foreign Material Program, FMP, within Canada. Did you hear that? Within Canada. Is sponsored by the Canadian Forces Intelligence Command, aligned with several intelligence sharing arrangements and treaties. And so I want to get into that that the the part he just said there, because that alliance that he's talking about is the Five Eyes Alliance. And I know when I say that, when I say Larry Maguire and the Five Eyes Alliance, I mean that sounds like a sci-fi movie, doesn't it? Uh, it did to me when I when I put it through my mind and I ran it through my, my thoughts, I go, man, that sounds like a sci-fi movie. Well, let me tell you something. This is not sci-fi. This is not science fiction. My friends, this is science fact. And I don't care what debunkers say. I don't care what skeptics say. Um, in this sense, this is real. I don't care how you spin it. I don't care how you twist it. I don't care how many times you deny it. This is real. And soon the whole world will know it. Well, let's go ahead and get to the Five Eyes Alliance for a minute. And so... Who is it? Who is the Five Eyes Alliance? Is that some kind of weird creature with five eyes? No, it's not. It's actually got a very practical and easily explainable uh, origin. It actually, the Five Eyes Alliance represent five countries that are allied. And that is the U.S., Canada, U.K., Australia, and New Zealand. Now, the question that some of you may be asking, I know I did at first, is, is where did the Five Eyes Alliance come from? 
what is their origin and if you trace their origin back what you're going to discover is that back in 1941 during the middle of World War II there was an Atlantic Charter that was established to form this Five Eyes Alliance. Now it did not become official until 1946 right after the end of World War II. The original intent of it was to share intelligence between these five allied countries. And so that was the idea. Now one of the things that uh, Jeremy Corbell and George Knapp had mentioned is they'd heard of the Five Eyes Alliance, but now there is what's called the Five Eyes Alliance Material Program. I mean, Larry mentions that in his letter, and so they're like, I, I watched their whole episode, and they're like, you know, I've never heard of this. Maybe I'm not in the know, and George is like, hey, well, maybe I heard it, but I don't remember it, but but neither one of them seemed to be able to do that. So this is something new. And when I talk about Brandy Vincent in just a second, which I'm going to do uh, in just a second, I want you to remember what I just said about the fact that they hadn't heard of this. Now, maybe it's relatively new. And so some of you are familiar with Brandy um, Vincent. This is Brandy Vincent. She's a reporter. Um, let me tell you something. She is a friend of UAP Twitter. She is a friend of the truth because she's been on the right side of history as far as reporting about UAPs and I really respect her a lot. But she had mentioned that as she was studying the Five Eyes Alliance, her exact quote was that they are being tight-lipped about their nascent attempts at collaborating on the UAP topic in the aftermath of their initial engagement. Now, I don't know about you, but nascent is not a word I use every day. But when I looked it up to make sure I understood it, I mean, it spoke volumes. It communicated a lot about the material program that's now going on in the Five Eyes Alliance. Because let me give you an idea of what nascent means. It means just coming into existence and beginning to display signs of future potential. And so maybe the way George, the reason George and, and Jeremy were not aware of this material program is maybe because it's relatively new. Maybe it's finally the U.S. is starting to share some of their stuff with Canada and Canada starting to share it with the U.S. And I don't think any one country has a monopoly on this stuff. Uh, I mean, I, I believe that Russia and China also have their own program going on as far as UAP studies and UAP re uh, research and reserve, uh, reverse engineering and all that. And so what all this means is that a conjunction has been taking place between not only Canada and the US, but Canada, the US, the UK, Australia, and New Zealand. And they have been working on, and this is really important that you get this, they have been working on um, crashed retrieval and reverse engineering um, stuff going on, reverse engineering, trying to figure out how these things run and trying to learn their technology. And I'm telling you, especially because the military has it, I can guarantee their first priority is to turn this into some kind of weapon. Um, because the truth of the matter is there's an arms race going on right now. There's an arms race between China and between Russia and the U.S. and its allies because the first person who breaks the code here is going to have a massive advantage on all the other countries. And so I'm really hoping that the good guys figure this out before the bad guys do. It's really important. Now, one of the things that I thought was interesting as I read this letter from Larry McGuire, the member of parliament from Canada, is that he had met with his American counterparts 
And so he's not just talking about what's taking place in Canada, but he's also talking about what his American counterparts are telling him that's taking place in, in America as well, and probably other places. Now, one of the things I thought was interesting, um, and this meant a lot to me because I'm a huge fan of Lou Elizondo, is that even mentions that Lou, El I think it was Jeremy who mentioned that, that he met with Lou Elizondo. And so this guy has been given some pretty interesting information. And what he's trying to do is to try to get the Canadian government out in front of it. And I hope our politicians here in America are paying attention because I'm telling you what, it's coming out. You cannot stop. You cannot stop this. I mean, it's going to happen. And the question you have to ask yourselves, senators and congressmen, is which side of history do you want to be on? Do you want to be on the right side of history or the wrong side of history? Because the longer that you deny, the longer that you try to play ignorant, it's going to make you look so bad when the truth comes out. And trust me, the truth is coming out. You cannot keep a secret like this forever. And I think it's, it's time to come out. I think we're ready for it. I think after listening to David Grush, I mean, it was a little bit sobering. I mean, it was very sobering if you thought about some of the implications. But I'm telling you what, I want to know. I want to know. I think we want to know. We don't want the government hiding stuff from us, even if it's bad news. Let us prepare for it. And so I'm really hoping that Congress, at the Senate here in the United States, that they're going to become aware of this letter. And I'm sure they will, because it's the way I've seen it's being spread uh, quite broadly. And so I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that they're going to get it. Um, now, one thing that I thought was important, because you know when a letter comes out like this, you kind of wonder, well, is it legit? Did somebody just use Larry's name and, and letterhead? But the one thing that was important to me is that Jeremy Corbell says that this letter is 100% legit. I mean, that's a pretty strong endorsement. He didn't say 90%. He didn't say 95%. He said 100%. Now, one of the things, if you read through this letter yourself, I have a copy of it here, is you're going to see a few abbreviations. And so let me go ahead and, and give you a couple of them. Um, FMP. I mean, that was one that I had to kind of digest and figure it out. But all it simply stands for is Foreign Material Program. And so we could say that's crash retrieval and reverse engineering. Just not the terminology that we use, but that's exactly what it means. Now, another thing that was interesting that came out of McGuire's um, letter is that he, he talked about how this had referred back to 1950. He, he mentioned that in the, the highlight I mentioned in, in um, number two of the first page of his letter. And then once again, one of those initials, at least this one he spelled out pretty clearly, it's DRDC, which I mentioned already, just say it again, make sure we get it, and that is Defense Research and Development Canada. And the profound thing that was mentioned in that second area that I highlighted is that it shows that the Canadian government has been involved, participated in efforts to analyze UAPs, which he says is publicly traceable back to circa 1950. And so they were, they've been stuck through the Five Eye Alliance. It's been out there, at least. I don't know if you have the same collaborative effort, and that may be where the word nascent comes from, is now they're really collaborating on it. Maybe it's not in some pockets here or there, but it's kind of like the main thing. That One of the main things they're working on is they deal with different intelligence and stuff like that, issues that are going on around the world. And so the question I had, I don't know if I'm with Jeremy and George on this about Wilbur Smith and... Sarbacher and all the stuff, the communication that took place back in 1950, it could be. But to me, it sounds more likely that 1950, circa 1950, probably refers to some kind of 
UAP or UFO crash incident. That there's, there's public records that will date back as we dig deeper, as we look, that are going to date back to circa 1950. Well, let me tell you something, and this is just me. Circa 1950 isn't that far from 1947, by the way. And we all know what took place in 1947. And so maybe, maybe it has nothing to do with the crash in 1950. Maybe that's when they really started working together to analyze. Maybe when the, that's when they got their hands on some of this material. And so that was another interesting thing that I found from that letter as well. Now I want to move on and as we get ready to close this episode down, I want to talk about some of the implications from Larry McGuire's letter, his article, whatever you want to label it. Um, what are some implications? What should we take from this letter? Well, the first thing that we should take from this letter is that we're being lied to. We've been lied to for a long, long time when, when it comes to crash retrieval and reverse engineering. And I know 10 years ago, people laughed at that. Well, let me tell you something, no one's laughing anymore for decades. And like I said before, this stuff's going to come to light. Um, the other thing we've learned from this letter is that there are at least five countries, the Five Eyes Alliance, the U.S., the U.K., Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, have been collaborating to keep this secret from the world. This is their dirty little secret that they wanted to hold on to because whoever solves this puzzle first wins. But that's what it means. It means that we've been lied to. Um, number three, McGuire is afraid of a, black, a backlash. And I mentioned this and I talked about it. So this is an implication as well, is that he was worried about this backlash in Canada and how Canada is going to lose the public trust if they don't get out in front of this, if they don't get out and start being honest with the Canadian people, they're going to do irreparable damage to their credibility. And once again, I'm talking to our lawmakers in the U.S., I'm talking to our senators and congressmen and women, you better get out in front of this. You better get out in front of this because your credibility the future of our political system in America is going to be impacted when this truth comes out. And so once again, which side of history are you going to be on? Are you going to be on the right side of history or the wrong side of history? Now, another thing we found out, and this wasn't any big deal, but it's, got, it's a small implication, is to realize that we have arrow in America. That's the UF government-sponsored UFO, UAP funded group that's studying UAPs. Well, we learned, I'd never heard it before, maybe you had, but that Canada has a, a program that's very similar to Arrow, and it's called Sky Canada Project. And so, like I said, that's the equivalent of Arrow. Number five, he wants their Congress to get involved. I mean, that's what we're doing with Senator Gillibrand. That's what we're doing with, with different senators. Um, I don't know what happened to some of them. I, I, I worry about that. Because the CIA and other groups, they have dossiers on powerful people in America. And all they need is just one little dirty, dark secret. And they can shut people up. And so I'm kind of worried because, you know, in that first hearing, we had several senators, congressmen, whatever, that were involved with this. And some of them have kind of just faded into the background. And so my suspicious mind's going, oh, man. Did they have some dirty little secret that they don't want out? And so don't ever forget that when people go silent... There may be a reason for it. And so we need to push hard. We need to push very, very hard. We need to make sure that we keep Congress um, involved and in pushing and fighting for us. 
Now, one thing that I, I like that he said as well, because I'm, I'm so disappointed in our country, is that we are so politically divided. And if there's one thing that cannot be a part of UAP Twitter, one thing that cannot be a part of this subject, and that's politics. And so I, I love that Larry McGuire said, and I believe he's a conservative, it doesn't matter, but I believe he said that this transcends politics. This issue is bigger than politics. Politics. Let me say this as well. This issue is bigger than any one country. This is the biggest thing to ever happen to our country, to our world. It's mind-blowing if you think about it. And one thing he, number seven, the last thing I'm going to mention is he wants Canada to take a leading role in confirming the existence of recovered material and balancing the national security concerns at the same time. So um, it's basically he wants Canada to let the truth out as much as they possibly can without affecting national security. And you know what? That is the exact same thing we are asking for here in America. We don't want the most important secrets. We don't have to have the spacecraft. I mean, it would be nice. I'd like to have them, but we don't have to have them. I understand if they're trying to reverse engineering, if they're trying to get there before the Russians and the Chinese do, um, I get that. But for right now, what I would settle for, I think what most of us would settle for is for them to come out and admit that this stuff exists so that we don't all feel like we're crazy and we're tired of people making fun of us and we're sick and tired of people in their arrogance looking down their noses at us as if we're primitive and we're not advanced and we can't think for ourselves and we're just believing in mythology. To have our government and come out and confirm what we already know is true because there's too much evidence. And I want to say this as well. Um, I, I get science, I get how it works, but anecdotal evidence is evidence, especially when you get enough of it from enough credible witnesses. And the reason that the debunkers don't want it to be used is because when you put it all together, when you take out the, the hoaxes, when you take out the people with mental illness, when you take out the um, misidentification, what you're left with is an overwhelming amount of evidence that this is real. And so I hope you enjoyed the show today. I know I enjoyed, enjoyed doing it. Um, so I really hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, I'm just I'm asking you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to grow this channel and it's starting to pick up a little momentum. And so you can help with that. And so if you would like to, and I would encourage you to do it, please hit the subscribe button. Anyway, you have a wonderful day. God bless.